we've done today is we've come up to the Brecon Beacons in Wales to make a little video about hiking safety or the, the minimum equipment and the way to use it correctly that hikers should use. Proof of the pudding being in the eating, over the Christmas period, at least one hiker up in um, Scotland in this case, died of hypothermia within walking distance of the car park where he left his vehicle because he carried the wrong type of equipment. Now, if like me, you're out for a week or a weekend, then you tend to carry with you a tent, a sleeping bag, and all the necessary equipment to survive. If that's the case, great. You don't need to carry emergency equipment. Or if you do carry emergency equipment, the emergency equipment is a backup to your main equipment. If, however, you're a day hiker, such as the poor fellow who died up in Scotland, then you need to think about a few essentials to carry with you, so should disaster strike, you can at least survive the night to await rescue or to extract yourself from the problem or from the situation to start with. Before we go on to look at emergency equipment, the first two things I would recommend that everybody carries, everybody learns how to use, is a map and a compass. Okay, a map, especially in this country, is a fantastic piece of equipment. It's highly detailed, highly specialised, and once you understand how to read a map, you should never, in theory, get lost. Compass. A compass isn't a magic talisman to stop you getting lost. You need to learn how to use it. Once you learn how to use a compass, with good um, intelligence gathering, good visual reconnaissance, i.e. looking around yourself, understanding the landscape, being able to read the landscape and transfer it onto the map, you should never ever become geographically embarrassed again. With these two items, you should never find yourself in an emergency situation, because you should always be able to navigate into and navigate out of anywhere. Other items you may want to consider carrying on your person is a whistle, because more people have been rescued in the UK through blowing a whistle than anybody, anything else. The secret to a whistle is to recognise the international distress signal, which is six long blasts over a minute period. Wait for a, a short time, if you don't hear any answering blasts, blow another six blasts. If rescuers can hear you, or rescuers are looking for you and they hear your blasts, they will reply with three blasts. Most important, when you hear the free blast, when you know someone's coming to look for you, another item that I carry, in this instance, no big survival knives and axes and saws, is a small Swiss army knife, with a less than three inch non-locking blade. The reason for this, when I'm hiking, I don't want to be breaking the law. I have no reason to be carrying my bushcraft gear because I'm not doing bushcraft, I'm hiking. If I'm camping, I'm camping. So a small Swiss Army knife with a less than three inch non-locking blade is legally okay within the UK. Obviously if you're going to other countries, then the rules are slightly different. But a small Swiss Army knife, as Sir Randall Fine says, with all the little gadgets on there, can get you out of a lot of situations, help you repair bits and broken bits and pieces of your kit, etc. So another thing to recommend. Obviously we want to carry a warm kit. We should always carry at least a warm jacket so that if we are stuck out overnight we've got a warm layer to put on. A flask filled up in the morning, taken out with you during the day, hot drinks all day. You don't need to carry a stove, you don't need to carry cooking equipment, you can have a hot drink. Top tip there, if you do take a flask out, always make sure that you leave enough in the flask so that you've got a hot drink when you get back to wherever you're staying. That way, if you do get stuck out overnight, you've got a hot drink to see you through the night. The last two items... Okay, the last item and the reason we're going to do this video in the first place is the orange survival bag, which is a 10 gauge plastic, heavyweight plastic, um, orange bag. Obviously, a bright orange bag, good for signalling for a rescue if you're in an emergency situation, and comes with an idiot's guide on the front to tell you how to use it. We're also going to look at warming up the survival bag with a tallow candle. The tallow candle is an edible fat which burns for approximately nine hours, which means that should we be in a situation where we're stuck out all night, the tallow candle will give us at least a night's worth of heat inside our emergency survival bag. The rule of thumb, generally speaking, is that the tallow candle will jump up the temperature within the bag up to possibly 
as much as five degrees. So it's a great piece of kit to carry. Okay guys, so you've been out hiking, you're a day hike, you've got a rucksack or a day sack with you in there, you've got the obligatory cheese and pickle sandwiches because you're British, you've got a flask of tea, you've got an emergency survival bag, a candle, your map, your compass, your camera, but suddenly you realise it's getting dark, you're not going to make it back to the car park where you left your vehicle or back to your bed and breakfast, so you're going to have to have an emergency night out. No panic, no great shakes, it's time to calm down and enjoy. It's a freebie, it's a special night out that you're going to tell people about for years to come. So the first thing we need to do is stop where you are sit down and start to relax okay T of the acronym stop is think think about what you're gonna do think about where you are and consider your options I also like to think of the tea as tea you've got some tea left in your flask have a cup of tea while you're relaxing while you're drinking tea your brains coming down the gear it's allowing you to evaluate the situation the next letter of the acronym stop is O that means orientate or organize yourself. If you've decided that you're gonna be able to walk out, you orientate yourself, you sort out the map, you sort out your navigation, and you make good shakes to get out of the area. If you're gonna stay in the situation, you're gonna stay where you are, you decide that it's no good, you're not gonna be able to walk out, then you organize yourself. Put on your warm clothing. Work out what equipment you've got with you to make your situation better. And the last thing, the last letter of the uh, acronym STOP, plan. Plan your situation, plan what you're going to do. Do people know you're out? Are people going to be looking for you? If they are going to be looking for you, plan signal so that if someone's coming to find you, they can find you, aid the, the, the um, searchers, assist them in finding you, okay? So remember the acronym STOP. So in this situation, it started to get dark. I've only got about half an hour left of daylight. I've decided that I'm going to have to stay in this situation now and see the night out. I've put on my warm clothing. I've got my emergency equipment out. And I'm now going to organise myself into a survival shelter for the night. Taking the survival bag, I open it up fully. As you can see, on the front of the bag, there are a whole host of survival instructions. Going through them quickly, I've not seen one instruction on there that tells you how to use this bag. So this will be a good, um, a good little reminder, a good little aid the memoir. Okay, check which end's the open end, which end's the end you get into. That's important. Take the other end of the bag, open it up enough that you can open the gillet to cuss it. So, then taking our pen knife, we can do one of two things. We can slit up the gusset just enough to make a, a face size opening so that we can use it as a type of hood, or we can cut off a corner. The idea is that by cutting off the corner or cutting a slit up the front to make a face size opening, we're allowing condensation to escape from the bag. We sat in the bag all night, our body's going to, you know, there's going to be evaporation taking place, we're going to be breathing so there's condensation, we want to minimise the dampness in the bag. Okay, once I've done that, I'm ready to climb inside the bag.
Hello! As you can see, I'm now fully protected from the elements. The wind can't get me. My, body's, my, my body temperature, my body warmth is now warming up the bag. By having the small opening at the top there, I'm allowing my breath, my condensation to escape. I'm also sitting on top of my pack now. I'm insulating the rest of my body from the ground. This is going to greatly improve the warmth of my comfort over the night. The next thing I need to do is to light the candle, which I place on the ground between my legs. That allows a warm wave of air to rise up inside the bag, keeping me warm. Maybe not toasty warm, but warm enough to survive the night. Bye bye. As you can see here, now while I've changed places with Steve, who's now inside the bag, and what I want to show you is the place where you locate the candle. You locate the candle here, on the ground. As you can see, the heat from the flame is rising up between Steve's legs and into, into the rest of the bag. The bag itself then acts as a shield to protect the candle, and thus avoiding the wind blowing in and blowing a candle out. You'll notice again that Steve has insulated his body from the ground by sitting on top of a rucksack. Later on tonight, when the light's fully gone, what I'll do is I'll show you the way the, the sack actually works as um, a beacon as well. The light of the candle, the light of a head torch or whatever inside the bag turns the, the orange bag into a glow-in-the-dark emergency rescue signal. But again, once the light's gone, we'll show you that later. As you can see, at night, with a head torch on and a candle burning between the legs, the shower itself becomes a bright orange Belician beacon. This is fantastic. This alerts rescuers to our location. Either search and rescue helicopters using heat seeking technology, will see the heat created by the body and the candle, or rescuers using the Mark 1 eyeball will see the glow of the orange shelter. So either way, we're going to attract attention to ourselves and stay safe and warm until people find us. As I mentioned before, the temperature range can be up to five degrees warmer than the outside temperature while a candle is burning. Steve has been in the shelter now in the bivy and the survival bag for approximately about five or ten minutes. How warm are you feeling now, Steve? I'm surprised at how warm I am. Considering the short time that I've been in here, the temperature difference is, is really quite noticeable. Brilliant. For those who are interested, the outside temperature at the moment is approximately one degree above freezing. Inside that ship. Okay guys, so that's it. For a small amount of equipment, we can make the difference between life and death. An orange survival bag and a candle. Simple. Costs a few pounds and can make the difference between you freezing to death becoming hypothermic and dying, or surviving the night. As I say, it may not be comfortable. It may not be a night's sleep. You may be sitting there all night, uncomfortable, awake, worried about being lost, worried about the fact that you've got a candle burning between your legs, but you'll be alive in the morning. More importantly, if rescues are searching for you, you've given them a very, very good aid to discovery for them to find you. Remember, if you're going out hiking for more than a couple of days, you'll have all the kit with you anyway. You'll have your tent and sleeping bag. If you're a day hiker, stick a candle, stick a, um, an orange survival bag, a flask of hot drink, compass, map, warm jacket, all of those things into your day sack before you leave home. And you should never ever come unstuck on the hills. I hope you found this video entertaining. I hope you found this video educational. I apologise for any errors that may have been in this video. However, take on board the most important information. Something like this can save your life. And in the long run, if this video saves one person's life, then it'll be worth it. Yeah.